hello great youtubers welcome back in this lesson we will look at analog input and output example let's get started kindly subscribe and also press on the notification bell so that you always be notified whenever i upload new videos also leave comments below this will help me to improve on this tutorial series in our previous tutorial we looked at the uh, data input and output example that we can see right on our screen today we'll be looking at the analog input and output example basically what will help us to simulate this will be sliders so to do this we'll go back to the wizard and then we look for sliders we can select this type vertical slider select and then i click on ok Okay, so I have my first slider. Now this slider will be changing states, which is between zero up to hundred, and I need to know the movement, the change in state whenever I move the slider. Um, so right now I move back to the wizard, and then I look for a meter that can monitor the slider. So I have this uh, linear meter right here. So I will double click on that, and then click OK okay so i have it here now the next thing to do in the, the skater is to give them tags so we create a tag for them so I, okay. so if this slider let's say is the level of uh, water in the tank so i will call it let's say level one all right so we can see right on the face plate of this slider that we have the label so we can change the label of the so we can change the label to let's say tank level and then the colors are here we can either change it but i'll leave it as default also the slider range we have zero up to 100 if your level it's between zero up to 200 you can specify but for now i'll leave it as such and then we have uh, the tag labels other colors also at the background here test color but for now leave them as default i click ok okay so it's asking me to define the level one i click ok and then i come to the tag type remember for the digital one we were using the discrete but for analog one we can no longer use the discrete because this is not a discrete value so you see that automatically it selects memory rail so if i double or click on this i can see discrete i can see other stuff but this is supposed to be memory rail so if the signal that you are picking is you are you are supposed to read it from an external plc then it's going you are going to select io rail but assistance now we are going to use the internal memory of the SCADA. so we will use memory rail so i'll cancel because it's already selected memory rail and then i click on save close close again all right so just as we did for the digital ones if we want this tank level to have influence on this particular meter then we need to assign the same tag name to it so i'll double click on this i can either type directly or delete this one double click move into the dictionary and then i'll look for level and then i click ok so i have the level assigned to the meter and then i click ok as well right basically this is all what you need to do we click on the runtime to see what exactly happens okay so at the moment the level is at zero if i start shifting let's see what happened we can see the meter reading as such level at 60 the meter is also at 60 and then when i reach 100 meter is at 100 perfect so let's go back and look at other examples okay i go back to the wizard and then go to meter and then i select a different meter type all right so i select this uh, speedometer and let's see what happens because i want this speedometer to display the data from this tank level I need to double click on it and assign the same tag name to it so double click again to go into the i select the level and then i click ok 
all right so assign to read so let me go to runtime and then we observe what happens in runtime i come back to zero the gauge is at zero but if i move and i'm at 100 this meter is indicating 100 but this is also indicating 100 but we can see the scale very wide scale so if you want the scale of this tank level to correspond we need to do something to this particular unit so let's go back to the development page and then rescale this so double click on it and we can see that we have the meter range is up to thousand for now we want our range to be within hundred so I change it and then I click OK all right so we can see that our scale has changed from zero up to hundred instead of thousand and when I go to the runtime and I'm at 100 I can see that I'm at full scale 100 if I come to 40 I should be at 40 and then when I come to 0 I'm at 0 good all right so basically this is uh, how to simulate analogs in in touch SCADA we'll look for at uh, another example I'll go back to the sliders and then we have another type of slider Okay, so I click on it and then I click OK. Let me position it right here and then assign the emitter to read. Okay, so this time I will assign this panel gauge to read. Alright, so we can see that this scale is from 0 to 100. This one is from 0 to 60. We need to change the scale so that it will match our data coming in okay all right so I have 0 to 100 I have to then give them tax now so I double click on this and this is going to be my let's say if this is my level 2 I'll say level 2 I click OK I have to define the same memory rail which is OK so I click on save and I can close this and then click OK here to close then I have to assign the same tag name to this. That's going to be my level two. I click OK. Good. So this is having the same tag name now. I can go to runtime and see what happens. I'm at zero. My gauge is at zero. If I push the gauge, observe what happens. You see that the the numbers are not changing. So I release it. Immediately I release, then it will update. So the difference between this particular slider and this slider is that with this one when you shift it gets updated instantly so whilst i move the slider data is being updated but with this type of slider when you shift it does not update till you've released okay good so these are the two examples of uh, analog signals that we can simulate Okay, viewers, this brings us to the end of this section. See you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Kindly leave comments below so that I can improve on this tutorial series. Thank you. Bye-bye.